Hey, a pleasure and good day, everybody. This is Sports for Night News. I'm Joe Bork, and this is going to be an NHL expansion draft preview. Sorry, that is the dog in the background. She's nervous from the storm, uh, rightfully so. Dogs get nervous from thunderstorm. But we're going to plow right through and do the expansion draft video while petting her in the background. Um, but uh, Cal Flurry and Hayden Flurry, it looks like there's going to be brothers uniting on the team. Hayden Flurry is, of course, a good quick skater. Ron Francis, draftee from the Carolina Hurricanes, that then went over to the Anaheim Duck and got extra playing time there in a small sample size. Looked really well. Uh, he's a guy that can move the puck, make the good first pass. He's never going to be an overly sexy offensive defenseman, but just does everything you want him to do and seems like he's going to get better with more and more playing time. Now, his brother, Cale Flurry is different um, from him. He is the um, guy that's the size, skill, and more of the bruising, uh, shot-blocking um, game that has been successful in the AHL but hasn't necessarily um, figured it out fully in the NHL yet. He'll just have to figure out how to be that smart, physical, contacted defenseman, hone in what his best traits are to really focus on at the NHL level and then take advantage of that. And then he'll be fine. And then you have a potential guy that's good depth or a potential guy to trade for draft picks in Kale Flurry, and have his brother Hayden Flurry, who seems like he'll become a good cream of the crop piece for them. Um, now, when it comes to the Arizona Coyotes, it has them picking Tyler Pitlick. I think that is a really smart move when Pitlick played here in Philadelphia. He was one of the best four checkers and one of the best penalty killers. That's a great thing to have on your team. And he's also a spark plug energy bug. And that's a good thing to have in your team as well. A great locker room guy. Check, 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 and check. So definitely a good pick there. Jeremy Luzon um, from the Boston Bruins. He's a defenseman I really like. He kind of reminds me of Ryan Lindgren. Maybe not as defensively skilled, but just a very good defensive defenseman. Um, from the Boston Bruins, that's a guy that you need on your team. You need those very steady Eddie. can just really stop the passing lanes, defend really well, be very consistent on the defensive end, not going to do anything too overly flashy. On the offensive end, but did have his best season last year. But it's just a good overall defenseman. A nice guy to have is Jeremy Lozano, and I think that's a good pickup. Uh, William Borgen um, from the Buffalo Sabres. That's an interesting one. He's a good physical defenseman. He became a fan favorite there since they lack physicality in Buffalo. And he came in and just is a bruiser. He will take on anyone. He's like the definition of the headstrong song by Trap. Um but he's a guy that will be fun to have if you can develop him. He's a good brute physical force. They're already bringing in Jamie Alexiak. He is from the right side, if I'm not mistaken, William Borgen. So you'd have Alexiak from the left side as a very good physical shot block and defense from the side. And then if Borgen develops, you'd have him from the right side as a very good shot block and physical defense from the side. Or you would have Kale Flurry from the right side as a good shot block and physical defense from the side. So you're kind of picking two people there that could develop into that trait. And then... When it comes to Columbus, they're kind of picking a guy there with some size. That's a shot-blocking guy in Gavin Bay Ruther. Um, but he's a guy that's undrafted, hasn't figured it out yet above the AHL level. And is a guy that I feel like they might be picking because he's a free agent just to kind of let go and not have to take any slot money from the Columbus Blue Jackets rather than going with Max Domi and taking the risk on him. When it comes to the Calgary Flames, this is a no-brainer. Mark Giordano, he's your captain. He's a guy that's a great leader. He's just coming off of the Norris a couple of years back and is still a great steady Eddie defenseman. He's just not the guy he once was, but is a great guy to have on your team any day of the week. You are definitely getting that done and picking Mark Giordano. Uh, Morgan Geeky. Morgan Geeky is a very smart pickup. He is a player that seems like he's going to keep getting better with age. Um, he's a guy that definitely fits into the category of picking up for the potential and already just having a good standard solid hockey player that if he stays at what he's at now, he's going to be a steady NHL player. Just nothing overly impressive, but just a solid um, off of just solid four checker that plays a solid mixed in offensive game when he's on the right line. But it seems like Morgan Geeky might have the potential to be more, and that's why they're going to select him. And I think he will have the potential to be more with more playing time. When it comes to Chicago, it seems like they just chose to take little money here, and they went with John Quinville, who has a chance to be either a depth piece or if he ends up making it in the NHL. He's a guy that plays a four-checking, kind of tries to play a physical game, but doesn't have the best size for playing the brute physical game. That really helps you in the postseason, like the good throws of the world and all that. So um, it's going to be interesting to see what he turns into or if that's just a guy they're taking to flip for middle-round picks or what they're doing with him there. 
a guy that I think is one of the more underrated guys in hockey is Jonas Donskoy, so I think that's a wonderful pick. Uh, he can play on the PK. He can play on the power play if you want to put him on there. He is definitely a potential top six second line guy, more so, but a top six player. Or he fits in very nicely to your third or fourth line as well. Good four checker, good on the defensive end, and good on the offensive end. So check, 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 check. Uh, you're definitely going to want Jonas Donskoy. Uh, Jamie Alexiak, we already talked about. I think he mixes in well. You're getting a nice mix. You're getting Hayden Flurry, who's a nice puck moving defenseman. You're then you're getting physical guys in Alexiak. I don't think, like I said, you're going to keep Bay Ruther. Giordano's a good all around defenseman. Lazan's a very good defensive defenseman. And then you're getting guys like William Borgen, like I said, who also bring physicality. And then obviously, Kale Flurry, Hayden's brother, brings that physicality if he can develop. Another guy that brings some shot blocking ability and some physicality as well, and just a very solid defensive game. It's already been rumored that they're signing him to an extension. Is Adam Larson. So Adam Larson is going to be a nice pickup for them. He just very much solidifies your defense. Wouldn't be surprised if he's paired with Giordano or if they try to space who you would consider their top two defensemen coming in on paper. I wouldn't be surprised if he's paired with Hayden Flurry either because that sounds like a pretty sexy pairing, a guy that can move pretty well in his skates and make a very good stretch pass with someone in Larson that that's what he lacks in his game to flash like the, the very good skating ability I should phrase it that way and the ability to make that very good first pass but is very good defensively so those two could also pair well together as for the Detroit Red Wings they are a team that does not have somebody selected from them yet um per the athletics article that I'm using for this video. So we'll scroll and figure out who's available for them, other than I know, like the Filpulas and Gagne's of the world. Um, they have Nemesnikov on there. Honestly, that wouldn't be a guy I would be opposed to taking a chance on if I'm the Seattle Kraken. Vladislav Nemesnikov might be able to get some things going. If you're going to go with some of the young, ge young gems, young guns they're getting that they hope turn into gems. I should say, Evgeny Sveshnikov is a guy that might have some uh, potential. Um, you have Turner Elson, Kyle Chris, blah, blah, blah. Kyle Chris Kula. I never say his name right, but you have him. Um, or if you want a veteran, you could prick Darren Helm, a very quick skater, a solid four-checker, a solid guy to have in your locker room. Nothing special anymore, but a guy that's been in a Detroit culture when they were winning as well as losing. So a guy that just knows how to do it all and get through it all. So that wouldn't be a terrible pickup either. It would be interesting to see what they decide to go with there. Riley Barber is also another cheap uh, option at forward as well. So it'll be interesting to see what they try to go with there. I'm not surprised they didn't submit anybody yet from them because they don't have the most plentiful list to pick from. Chris Drigger is another guy that is going to be getting a contract extension for them. Congratulations to him once that is honed in. Seems like he's going to be penciled in to be their starter. And it's going to be just the thing of, is Chris Drigger going to be? I think he's definitely proven he's going to be a steady NHL goalie. Now it's just, is he going to be that very good, consistent, just hand the reins to him and play him for like upwards of 42 or more games in a season or 42 as the max games in a season and then let the other guy go the rest? Or are you going to make him a platoon guy and then him and Vanacek make this wonderful marriage in Seattle and play really well? Because, spoiler alert, that's the guy that they're going to be taking from the Washington Capitals, which I love the mix of Drigger, who's really emerging while well. you're giving him a nice, realistically, $3 million, if that is what he ends up getting, or three and a half, whatever it was. Um, that's not even a starting salary. Now, that's more of like a 1B salary. So if he develops into a starter, you're getting a bargain, and you're getting Vanacek in a very good start, his first contract. So um, I think those are two very good pickups. And the third goal is going to be a guy that seemed to be developing some in Ottawa prior to injury, Joey Dackard, um, who played um, with the Red Wings as well. So um, it'll be interesting to see what they can make of him. He's probably going to be that kind of Oscar dance as guy that they're going to call up and mix in whenever they have some injuries with their goaltending, and we'll see what happens with him there, if he can become anything more than what Dance became, which was just a depth mixing goaltender, or if Dacker can develop into maybe a guy that becomes kind of a straight backup like Lauren Perso, just straight backup type goaltender, Curtis McElhaney, just straight backup type goaltender, we'll have to see. Uh, but I think they picked three pretty good goaltenders. They picked the third guy that's a good depth guy, a good guy to just have that's basically, like I said, the dance type guy. So I think it's a pretty good selection there that they did 
um, with them. As for their next selections, they pick Curtis McNermade, who's definitely another guy that won't back down um, from anyone. One of the toughest guys in the league. He has a ridiculous amount of penalty minutes. He will literally fight anyone. Um, and he's a nice physical presence to have on your team. A nice guy if you're lacking that and maybe guys get injured and you need physical presence to round out the season or especially in the postseason. He's a good guy to have for depth. I don't necessarily see him unless he has a great um, camp and preseason with the roster they're picking otherwise at defense to necessarily be starting. But who knows? There's been surprise guys. Nick Holden was good for a couple years for Vegas. So could he be a guy that goes in and just fits in tremendously and does well? Yes, he could be. So we'll have to see. But the next guy I think is definitely going to be a starting guy, which is Carson Soucy. They had the four-headed monster before getting rid of Suter up there in Minnesota. And Carson Soucy was a victim of it, just like Hayden Flurry was in Carolina, of not being able to get enough playing time. But he played very well in his teens minutes of playing time. And I think now getting around the 20-minute threshold, he's going to show that he is actually a top four defenseman, maybe even a top three defenseman, and play a very good all-around game. He's not going to obviously overly sexy and press you in the offensive zone, but he just plays a very good all-around defensive game and is not going to be a liability in the offensive zone either, which is more of what Larson is, is a very good defensive defenseman, not a guy you love in the offensive zone, though. So I really like Carson Soucy a lot, and I think that's just a guy that is an emerging defenseman is just going to get better and better um, over there in Seattle. Cowie Yonkroak, um, for me, was a no-brainer. He's a cheap player. He plays the game very well. He has versatility and plays center of the wing. He plays very good on the PK. He's a good four-checker, and if you want to, you can even put him on your power play. So what am I missing here? That's a perfect player to have. Let's just move on. Um... Nathan Bastion is an interesting guy from the Devils. I got the pleasure of seeing him a lot because I, one, have AHL TV and love watching AHL hockey as much as NHL hockey. But, two, I also, obviously, um, for Flyers and Gritty, got to go to cover some games, as I've reported on this channel before. So I've seen him in live person as well. And he is a fun player to watch because he reminds you of that old school, just a large physical specimen forward that just brings that high energy he was on uh, what they quoted as Lindy Ruff's energy line last year um in New Jersey um he's obviously not he's not a guy that's going to surprise you with his skating ability but he makes up for it in his effort um he only has a seal probably to be a fourth liner but he's a guy that is good defensively not the quickest but can really earn you those fourth line penalty kill minutes Basically being maybe like how Alex Chason is not the best skater, but actually developed into a solid overall player that's still playing to this day and has had a pretty good long NHL career. I could see Nathan Bastion developing into somebody of that particular nature with probably a wee bit better ability to skate as he develops his skating than Alex Chason. So I could definitely see that happening. I think that's a nice risk uh, pick there to see if he can develop. With the New York Islanders, they're simpatico with me. I love Josh Bailey, but I think this is what the Islanders also would want um, for them to happen, just because Josh Bailey's a little bit more of that leadership group as much as Jordan Eberle's a great player. But for me, I love Jordan Eberle. He's a great skater. Um, he's gotten better in the Islanders system, playing on both ends of the ice, being able to cut off the passing lanes with his speed on the defensive lane rather than just using his speed effectively in the offensive lane. So that's a good key asset to have now as well. So I love him as a player. I love him as a skater. I love him as a passer. And I think he's gotten significantly better on the defensive end, in my personal opinion, in the New York Islanders system. So that's a great player to have. You want to have a leadership guy like him. I think he will be an assistant captain on that team. Perfect player to bring in. For the Islanders, it's rumor, or not the Islanders, excuse me, the Rangers, it's rumor that they're going to pick Blackwell. I thought that should have been a no-brainer in general. He had an emerging season. He's in his late 20s now, and he only gets paid 700 and something K. So, duh, unless if the one trade rumors happen where the Rangers are able to keep Blackwell, then I would say you're going to pick Blackwell. But we'll have to see what happens there. Now, we already said for Ottawa, that's going to be Joey Dackard. I like that pick. He's kind of like the dance guy. You're going to see what he can be. He has some potential as he could actually develop and become a steady backup goaltender in the league that he might be able to flip for something. Who knows? But we'll have to wait and see. He was showing some promise before he got injured and had an unfortunate injury. <clears throat> Otherwise, excuse me, he actually would have got a chance to play in Ottawa. 
And he would have had a good chance this year, it seemed, if he didn't get that injury. Now, the Flyers, they have one of the more surprising picks from. You have a couple of the guys like the Robert Hags of the world. You could have got Braun as a veteran defenseman, but I seem like with the way they were going, maybe you didn't need those guys. But you also could have picked Connor Bonham in center wing potential, has had a little bit more success in the NHL level than Carson Trewinski in his time up. But they went with CT, Carson Trewinski. So from a pure hockey standpoint, that really doesn't affect the Flyers much. It just affects the way that they really wanted, obviously, their cap situation to be fixed. But hey, the Seattle Kraken aren't here to fix people's cap. Um, now, the Pittsburgh Penguins, they don't have anybody... Um, submitted in here yet that is rumored to get picked from them. So I'm going to pull up their expansion draft uh, pick here for the ability to see who else they have available other than guys I know like Aston Reese. Um, okay, so they have Anthony Angelo, Aston Reese, Frederick Goudreau, decent developing player, Mark Jankowski had a solid season. I would say looking from this... And they already picked enough defensemen, so I'd say you're not going to go with Cody CC. You picked enough that kind of fit into his category of defensemen. You're kind of flooding it with those people. Um, Brandon Tanev, um, I would have to say that's the guy that's been in rumors, so I would just go with him. It's not confirming the athletic thing, but I did see that in rumors in somebody's tweet. So I'm just going to go Brandon Tanev. He's a solid player to have a good skater, 3.5 million, maybe a wee bit overpaid, but 3.5 is not that big of a cap hit. And they got to hit that margin that they have to get to, like 49, whatever it is, um, to hit to get to after the expansion draft. So I would say Brandon Tanev is the likely pick. Jason Zucker is a bigger cap hit of 5.5, but I would say you're likely to go with Brandon Tanev there. Now, when it comes to the San Jose Sharks, they're going with pure, pure, true potential here with Alexander True, who is another guy that I actually like. I had the privilege to watch a bit via AHL TV, not going out there to watch uh, the Barracuda, but um, I got to cover them as a team with the um, Overtime Heroics crew while I was there. And... um. There's not much for them to choose from, but he has 19 games. He's a big six foot five guy that can play center. You can definitely put a guy with that much size on the wing. He's a guy that you should be able to develop because of his size to being a good checker, a good four checker, and also a good shot blocker at the forward position. So he's a guy that's going to be good for depth, but a guy that might be able to develop into a solid fourth line center, and maybe sooner rather than later. We know the surprise guys, the no-shicks of the world, and so on and so forth, that Vegas was able to take over and turn into very good assets. Maybe he's one of them for the Seattle Kraken. Now, Vince Dunn, uh, this is something Flyers fans did not want to see with the trade of the Tarasenko rumors. Hopefully we can still get something done with the Blues, but that's a different conversation for a different time. But you have Vince Dunn getting picked from the Blues, and that's a perfect pick. There were rumors about Vince Dunn last year, and then all of a sudden he started playing multitudes of minutes after those rumors about him. So I believe Vince Dunn is the perfect pick. He's a great guy to mix in. You actually have a pretty solid defense. You have Carson Soucy on this defense. You got Vince Dunn. You got Hayden Flurry. You got Mark Giordano. And uh, you got Adam Larson and Jamie Alexiak. That is honestly a fairly sexy defense for an expansion team just starting off. And then you're bringing in other guys like William Borgen, who obviously has the potential to develop, and Kale Flurry, Hayden's brother, excuse me, who has the potential to develop as well. So I think they're definitely doing a pretty good job here. Now, when it comes to the Tampa Bay Lightning, I think you should take Yanni Gord. There's also Alex Kalor. Those are my two guys. The Athletic didn't have anybody submitted yet for them, but I think you should take Yanni Gord. He's a perfect center, a great guy to just play in your first line. He played great, broke, or was around the rookie record for Tampa, playing in bottom line minutes. Now he's going to have an opportunity if he comes to this team. I would take him, but Kalorn's a great player to take as well. And if they take Kalorn, I wouldn't be surprised if they decide to maybe make a move for Tyler Johnson, who it seems like Tampa would also want to move on from via the trade market, and maybe they eat some of that salary, so it's like, say, $3 million instead of 5 and we'll see what happens there. 
Toronto, they're going to take Jared McCann. Jared McCann is a very good player. That was actually a smart move, in my opinion, by Dubas. You're trading a Hollander and then a draft pick just to be able to um, keep your guy and just have Jared McCann get picked. So it looked like in the other scenario, you would have had to give up more if you made a deal with the Kraken. So I think that was actually a smart move in my in my eyes by Kyle Dubas. Uh, Cole Lynn is a smart pickup, too, um, from the Vancouver Canucks. Um, you brought in a good group of forwards already for this team, and it seems like um, in trade rumors they might be doing more when it comes to that forward core. So Cole Lind is a nice young player to bring in and see what he can turn into. He has a very good lethal wrist shot and can shoot that one-timer with the best of them, so I'm excited to see what he can turn into. Vanacek we already talked about, and then Mason Appleton's coming off of one of his best seasons uh, 25 points, it was his breakout season, he's a very good power forward, and he's going to have the opportunity to maybe even be your second line center, who knows, uh, we'll have to see, but h him getting a great opportunity, I think you're going to see him flourish and really become a very good player uh, with more and more minutes, a very good two-way player, he's never going to overly impress you one way or the other, but he's just a very solid do-it-all, do-as-they-say, a very coachable player, it seems, from all things you would hear reading articles about him out of Winnipeg. So that wraps it up. Uh, that would be their team. And obviously, that's not going to be their true team, as you're going to see a bunch of trades made like we did with Vegas tonight, and you're going to see different guys move and different guys come in to get via trades because they wanted to take advantage of cap situations of teams and select somebody else in the expansion draft, which is a smart strategy. Why pick Tyler Johnson? We might be able to get them to knock his cap hit a little bit. <clears throat> um, if you actually want Tarasenko, they're desperate to trade him, so why pick him when it seems like they're not going to get the bang for the buck for him when you might be able to just get him in a trade if you're willing to just say, I don't know, move a draft pick for next year or something for him. And then some guy that you draft that they actually like to switch back so they have a player and then a next year's like first round pick or something like that. So th you can do these trades. They're strategizing. Imagine if you got Vince Dunn and Tarasenko and then you use Tarasenko to flip for a guy, maybe like Voracek, they won in that team that's more of a playmaker rather than a play driver um, on that team, and they're thinking of somebody else to do more of the scoring touch on the team. But we'll have to see. I think they actually have a pretty well-laid-out team, and there's a bunch of rumors about them potentially on the market for a bunch of forwards, like I said, the Tyler Johnsons of the world and more that are on teams that are cap strong. So we're going to have to see what happens there. I hope you all enjoyed this video on the NHL Expansion Draft Preview. Everyone have a great save and pleasant day. And enjoy the Expansion Draft. There is going to be many trades made, even though a lot of guys are leaked. I'm interested to see how the team actually shakes out at the end of the night compared to what I just read and the predictions I made for the teams that aren't slotted in yet because we know it's viable to change. It happened with Vegas. So have a great day and pleasant night, everyone. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Borg. Please subscribe here if you enjoy the content. And also at steelflyers.com. Check out all the content there as well. Peace out and stay safe, everybody.